Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Viral with FKI Quality. Today I would like to talk to you about the risks of acting without knowledge as a point of contrast uh, to make sure that we always seek knowledge before acting. Knowledge may be acquired in a gradual way through PDSA cycles, kata cycles of learning, kaizen trials, etc. But what you cannot do, what you mustn't do, is try to act in a way that is based on the lack of knowledge due to um, an extrapolation which is really beyond any reason. The example I'm going to use actually is a very sad example. It's the example of the Space Shuttle Challenger that exploded over the skies of uh, Florida shortly after taking off. One of the things that had happened um, up until that time is that NASA had had very, very many successful launches. However, these launches had been uh, conducted at um, a certain ranges of temperatures within which there was knowledge about the performance of a critical component, which is the O-rings that supported the uh, very high pressure inside of the rocket boosters. That's what failed and that's what led to the um, catastrophe of the Challenger. But the reason why they failed is because they were operating at a temperature that was truly outside of range. Let's take a look at the numbers and see what we can learn from this. Uh, I'm going to draw here a, uh, uh, a numbers line that is going to, uh, I'm going to use it to kind of record the different types of uh, uh, temperatures at which successful launches happen. And so we have here, let's say, um, coming from a, a very nice weather, like let's say 80 degrees, that would be an 85, uh, 75, 70 mark. These are uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, 65, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, all the way to in the vicinity of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. These being the launch temperatures of uh, in, in the mornings, uh, the temperatures rather in the mornings of the launch of the space shuttles. Now, what we can see uh, from from the data is the majority of the of the launch temperatures fit within a range that is not very wide. It's uh, between about you know, 65 and, uh, and about uh, 80, uh, up to a little bit over 80, 80 degrees uh, in temperature. And so, although this is not the exact uh, shape of the temperature uh, of each one of the various launches, and in fact there were even more than what I'm showing you in this uh, dot plot, uh, the idea is that um, this is kind of the range within which we have fairly good knowledge of this uh, data. Now, there were certain successful launches at lower temperatures, as low as about 56. And there was uh, so, some other one a little bit more uh, in, the, in the vicinity, and yet another one over here. Perhaps, as you can see, not so close to the bulk of the data, but still within a certain um, uh, proximity that allowed the NASA engineers to um, use what they have learned over many successful launches and then expand that knowledge and still have successes uh, at these lower temperatures. However, uh, even, even for this one, however, the number of um, O-ring failures uh, recorded was more than one. And so we can see how as we, as the temperatures get uh, colder, there is an increase in the number of uh, failures that had occurred and which had been um, uh, historically recorded, officially recorded. Now, let's just do a really simple couple of calculations here. Let's say that the, the highest temperature uh, for one of these launches was 82 degrees. That is actually come from the data. Successful launch, highest temperature, 82 degrees. Successful launch, coldest temperature, 56 degrees. If we look at this distance, and, and we divide this distance by, by six, which is a, a simple way of trying to establish the standard deviation for these values, we will find that we are at about a standard deviation of uh, 4.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 
um, and oh, and and uh, more or less, if we were to kind of eyeball this 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 the, the, all this data, we would see that the average is uh, more or less on on the 70s. Let's just say, you know, maybe 70 or 72 degrees. Uh, this would be the uh, average temperature. So now we have two indicators in addition to the dot plot. We have two indicators of the average temperature and a certain notion of the standard deviation of these um, uh, successful launches. Now, for the case of the Challenger itself, what happened was that the launching temperature was much lower than that. Um, it was beyond anything that had been done before. Uh, it was colder than 45. It was colder than 40 degrees. It was colder than 35. And actually, the temperature, the launching temperature, was uh, a very impressive 31 degrees. So now you have that uh, everything that has been learned over here, we're trying to extrapolate to a launching temperature of 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Just to get an idea of how far removed this is from any uh, prior experience, this would give us, if we were to measure you know, the distance between here all the way to here. So you have um, an amount of degrees, you know, you have 72 minus, um, minus 31, giving us like 41 degrees in, in difference in temperature, which divided by the 4.3 degrees gives us more or less nine and a half standard deviations from the average. Just to get an idea of, of how significant this is, even a, a difference of three standard deviations from the average already puts us towards the end of what could be considered uh, a normal behavior of uh, any type of variable that you may study that has a certain degree of variability embedded into it. Whatever was learned over here really almost had no relevance. And unfortunately, what you have here is this issue of you know, acting basically without knowledge with the consequences that unfortunately we know about. The system of causes, the system of forces, even the physical forces in these O-rings were completely uh, different from what they had been designed with the consequences that we saw. Thank you for your time.